So now we're in the interior of the earth roamer. Up here we've got a king size bed. So this is the primary sleeping area. A swing out TV, surround sound speakers up there, windows up front, storage cabinet, and there's also storage underneath the mattress. So we can lift this up. We have storage for long items like skis. The roof hatch opens up. Um, it has both a screen and a shade on it and you can open up, that gives you access to the roof. Um, great place to pop up and uh, take pictures, things like that. Here's our pull-out steps. So if I slide this guy all the way out, drop it down, gives me nice safe access into and out of the bunk. So this is the main living area. These seats are electric, so we can run them all the way in and convert this to a bed. We have sleeping for up to four adults, a king size over cab bunk, and then the sofa converts to just below a queen size bed. So with two people sit seated here, we can swing the TV all the way out in front of this window, and then this would be the sofa and you can watch the TV on this side. So we can swing this out 180 degrees, and then if you're standing at the galley or you have people seat seated in these seats, you can watch the TV. What we can also do is swing it further around. This slides down. Rotates around. And then you could sit in this seat and actually make it nice and comfortable and then watch your, watch your movie or TV. In this cabinet, we have our audio-visual equipment. So we have a Blu-ray DVD player, uh, Bose surround sound, uh, satellite TV, Apple TV. Over on this side, this is the main control panel. This is our power distribution. We have an AC circuit breaker panel, DC circuit breaker panel. We have gauges for battery charge, uh, water tanks, both fresh and gray water. This is the controller for the inverter charger, fan controller, and then air heater and hot water heater controls. And then the primary electrical systems are underneath this seat along with some additional storage. And then underneath this seat is where the water tanks and also the slide-out TV is underneath the seat, the exterior slide-out TV. The table stores out of the way when we're not using it. Then when we need it, we can pivot this out. This rotates around. And then like so. And then we have another table option. It's a smaller table, like so. And we could do four of these, two of the rear, two in the front, two of these, or the big table. The windows all have built-in screens and shades. So here's a screen that pulls down. The shade comes up. And then there are three positions that the window will open. There's latch position one, two, and then all the way open. That's great because you can get good cross ventilation if there's a light drizzle or something, keeps rain out of the vehicle. The windows are also a double pane acrylic, so they're very well insulated. Here we have our pantries and coffee bar. So Keurig coffee maker, and then a pantry with more slide out drawers here. All of our drawers are on full extension heavy duty slides and dovetail drawers. It's really important in a camper this size to make multiple use of space. So for instance, if we need more kitchen space, what we can do is just move the cushions up to the bunk area. And then we have a flip up counter that gives us more counter space. The camper is extremely well insulated, but the cab of the truck is not. So in very cold or hot weather, when we want to separate the two, we have these plugs that we've made that just slide in, and we can completely separate the cab from the camper. 
In the upper cabinet, we have storage in this one. And then this is either storage or this one has the optional quiet ride dish package. So that provides secure storage for all our plates, bowls, and glasses. So when you're going off road, nothing's gonna break or rattle. Storage for silverware. And in this drawer, set of nesting pots and pans, and just more free storage. We use an induction cooktop that offers many advantages. Um, one of the most important is some of the safety features of it. This cooktop will not heat up unless there's a pan actually on it. So if somebody accidentally turns it on, it's not gonna come on until there's a pan sitting on it. The other nice thing is it heats up very quickly and it cools down very quickly as well. So you don't have a hot surface in a small space, um, potentially causing somebody to get burned. It heats up very, very quickly, just a very efficient way to cook. We do a big, deep stainless sink, soap dispenser, uh, filtered water dispenser, paper towel holder, for a backsplash, we can do uh, any tile or any residential type of backsplash. Under the galley, we have our trash can, we have a cutting board, fire extinguisher, and our water filters. We have a seven cubic foot stainless steel fridge freezer. This is a marine refrigerator that we only power with 12 volt. Um, Many RVs use a three-way refrigerator that will run off of propane, 12 volt, or 110. The nice thing about this system is it's incredibly efficient. It's a compressor type fridge versus an absorption that draws very little power. So we can easily, with our solar panels and battery bank, run the fridge freezer all the time. So you can keep the fridge freezer stocked, and as long as you're outside getting uh, exposure to the sky, you've got enough power to keep the fridge freezer running. Another big advantage of a compressor type refrigerator is you don't have to be level for operation. So this fridge can be up to 30 degrees off level, still function perfectly, whereas an absorption refrigerator needs to be within one degree or less. We have a convection microwave, and the beauty of that is that you can bake and broil as well as microwave your food. On the back wall, here we have a bank of drawers, which is some of your primary storage. This is lockable, so we have a key here. You can lock the whole bank of drawers with one key lock. These are switches for exterior lighting, awning, the slide out TV, one of our speakers for our Bose 5.1 surround sound, and then above the door we have a mag light. Here we have a wine cabinet with storage for glasses, wine bottles, and wine tools. So behind this door is our main closet, cedar line, we can do hanging clothes, and shelves in any combination. Behind this door is our bathroom shower. So in here, we have a toilet. We have a shower with adjustable height, soap dispensers, a clothesline, a fan. The bathroom makes a great place to dry, say, your wet ski gear, or your wet beach gear. You can pull the clothesline out, hang your clothes here. It just drips into the shower pan. And we have the exhaust fan providing ventilation. And then also there's heat ducted in here to, to help dry things out. We have a sink and a medicine cabinet. Since this is a wet bath, everything in here does get wet when you're showering, we've designed it so the closet door and the bathroom door can latch together. This will give you access to dry clothes, towels, things like that, and a larger bathroom. All of our interior lighting is high efficiency LED lighting. We can control it near the entry door. Here's our ceiling lights. We have indirect lighting around the top, and then we have indirect floor lighting. Now this is also controllable from the main living area or from the main bunk. So that way you have complete light control no matter where you are in the camper. And we have USB outlets and AC outlets located throughout the camper. So we ordered the cab chassis trucks with a Lariat luxury interior, leather seats, leather heated and ventilated seats, all of the options. Some of the modifications we do, we lower the Ford console um, so that it makes access to the camper much easier. On the console, we have our air ride controller with three programmable ride heights. The standard height is two, but we can also do a programmable height of one that's lower, three that's higher. Individual controls for each axle as well as each individual tire. So we can raise and lower each corner, each side independently. We have a fuel tank monitoring system, tells us how much is in each of the fuel tanks plus our combined total. A ham radio, 
a system monitor that monitors water tank levels, both fresh and gray, as well as our battery levels. Tire pressure temperature monitor. With the Ford nav system, this controls a lot of the Ford functions, climate, uh, entertainment, things like that. We also then hook up our cameras to it. So we have a backup camera that we can manually switch to, or anytime we're in reverse, the backup camera will come on automatically. We also have a forward-facing infrared, kind of a night vision system. That's really good if you're driving at night to identify any animals or people in the roadway. And we have a camera mounted underneath the truck, faced toward the rear tires. That's very useful off-road so that you can uh, get good tire placement when you're going over rocks and boulders. On a long road trip, you're gonna spend a lot of time in the cab of the truck. And it's as important to be comfortable while you're driving as it is when you're in the camper. The Ford Lariat interior gives you that comfort. On the top of the Earth Armor, we have 1,200 watts of solar. That's five 240 watt panels that are designed to withstand hailstones at terminal velocity. We have an HD satellite TV antenna, a cellular voice repeater antenna, a digital broadcast TV antenna, and we have two fans, one for the bathroom and the fan for the main living area. Earth roamers are rough and ready for any adventure on the outside, yet luxurious and comfortable on the inside. An Earth roamer is the civilized way to escape civilization.